Hi everyone, so this is part of my series for the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark III menu system. And today we're going to be going over shooting menu number two. And shooting menu number two, Olympus calls this all of their advanced shooting features. So we have things like bracketing, HDR, uh, keystone correction, and, and more. So I'll uh, walk you through each one of these, uh, how to use them, the different settings available and options, and then maybe give you a couple of examples as well. All right, so let's go into the menu and uh, go into shooting menu number two, as indicated at the top, and you'll see that we have all of those things, right? Bracketing, HDR, multiple exposure, uh, keystone, etc. And uh, let's just start with bracketing on the first one here. Right now it's off, so we'll click OK, and we can scroll down to turn it on. But if you look carefully over here on the right, there's a little right arrow, so that means we have some additional options available to us in the bracketing menu. So let's click over to the right, and as you can see, we have AE bracketing, which is uh, auto exposure bracketing, white balance bracketing, flash bracketing, ISO bracketing, art bracketing, and focus bracketing. Uh, so there's a lot of options here. Now most of us are probably familiar with uh, exposure bracketing, and you can see over here the default setting is three frames, one EV. So that's going to take three pictures and separate them by one EV or one stop uh, between each image. However, this also has a right arrow for more options. So if we click on that, you can see that uh, we can do as, as little as two frames. Or if we keep scrolling, we can go as many as seven frames in different increments. You know, one third of an EV, two thirds of an EV. Uh, five frames of one EV, two thirds of an EV, 0.3 EV, etc. Let's uh, let's scroll down. Actually, if we scroll down to two EV, you'll notice there's options again within this because there's a little right arrow. So let's click over to the right, and now it's asking you. It's going to take two pictures. It's going to take one at the base exposure or what they call normal. And then one can be overexposed or underexposed, so we can we can select that over or under. Same thing with one EV, over or under by one EV. But three frames, there's no option because we're gonna take one under, one over, and then one normal. So why do we have so many choices? Uh, well, you know, it's just to kind of give you a little more granularity in the tones between bright and dark. So the more frames you take and the smaller the steps in, in exposure that you take, uh, the more tones you're going to be able to pick up between highlights and shadows. Uh, typically I use three frames, one EV in my professional work. That's usually enough for what I do in real estate. Uh, but you can select more if you want. So just experiment with that and see what works best for you for the scene that you're taking. But let's, uh, let's work with three frames, one EV to start with. So we'll click OK here, click OK again, click OK again, and now we have bracketing is turned on as indicated here. So I'll tap the shutter button to kind of back out of that. And you'll, if you look on the live screen, you'll notice that we have the bracketing icon now here at the top, and it's in a white color. And that tells us that the camera is ready to start taking that bracketing sequence of three frames. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, actually, before I do that, let me uh, lock some exposure settings here. So I'm going to lock the ISO at, say, let's just do it at 400. And I'm already in aperture priority, so the aperture is fixed at f5.6. Um, let's, let's lock it down to f4. So the first frame that the camera is going to take is at ISO 400, 1 50th of a second, and f4. So let's take a picture there. And now the next picture is going to take 1 EV negative, right? Minus 1 EV. So you can see that the shutter speed uh, halved to 1 100th of a second. But also notice the bracketing icon is turned to green. So the camera is telling you it's, it's in the middle of a bracketing sequence. Uh, in this case, it's on the second image of three. So let's take a picture here. 
And now the next image will be one stop over the base exposure. So it's going to double the shutter speed to 1 20th of a second. So there's a little rounding there between 1 50th and uh, 1 20th, but uh, close enough. And now you'll notice that the icon has turned back to white, meaning it's done with the previous sequence and it's ready to start the next sequence. Uh, now let me show you a little trick that I do when I do bracketing this way. Uh, to make it a little easier because every time you touch the camera there is the potential to move the camera or shake it, right? Uh, so what I like to do is use the custom self timer in the camera. So let's go in, I'm sorry, let's go into the super control panel and go down to the shutter mode and just roll this over until we get to the custom self timer and we're going to click OK. And then I can adjust some options here by clicking the info button. And the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to the left and tell it to wait, let's say, three seconds before it takes the first picture. And then I'm going to tell it to take three pictures, so times three. And I'm only going to ask it to wait a half a second between each one. And then finally, every frame AF, meaning I'm going to tell the camera not to autofocus on every image. I'm going to tell it just to lock focus on the first image and then keep it fixed there for the next two. All right, so that'll keep it from maybe missing focus because if it tries to autofocus with every frame, it may miss focus on one of the frames and then you're not going to be able to blend those back together later. So let's uh, take a picture here. So it's going to wait three seconds and then take the three pictures one half second apart. Uh, and that's how I do it. And it's, it's easy enough to, if we had picked, you know, say five frames, one EV, like so. Click OK, click OK is on. Uh, all I'd have to do is go into the custom self timer, hit the info button, and just move this up to five. So we have the white icon, meaning we're on the first uh, frame of the bracket sequence. And I'll click OK, or I'm sorry, I'll click the shutter button. It waits three seconds. And we're done. So just a little trick to uh, work with the bracketing. Now let's go ahead and turn the self timer off and put it back into regular mechanical shutter. All right, now let's take a look at some of these other uh, bracketing options. We have uh, white balance bracketing. And what this does is it adjusts the white balance or it does white balance tuning. So the first column here is your amber and blue. And then the second column is your green and magenta colors. And it'll take three pictures of each and a combination thereof. Uh, again, this is not something I use much, and I, I can't think of any application, but you're going to get nine pictures out of this all together, three times three. So we'll click OK, because I just want to show you a quick sample, and, and also tell you that you have to be a little bit careful when you start uh, selecting different bracketing modes, because the way I have it set now, it's actually going to uh, combine these two bracketing modes. So it's going to not only do five frames, at 1 EV, it's going to do that times 9, <laughs> because I also have white balance bracketing on. So that effectively is going to take like 45 pictures. So what I'm going to do is, I mean, maybe I want to do that, but I don't in this case. So let's turn this off. And I think we're good. So let's say bracketing on, on, tap the shutter button to back out, and then we'll take a picture here. And we still have our bracketing icon. And you'll see that the uh, card is still writing because it's actually creating nine pictures. And if I play that back, you'll see hopefully slight changes in the white balance color. All right, let's go to another one. And I always like to turn these off manually. Sometimes they'll turn off automatically when you select a different bracketing, but. Uh, we also have flash bracketing, and we only have three frames and three steps. A third of an EV, two-thirds of an EV, and one EV. So if you have a flash set on top of the camera in TTL mode, it will adjust the exposure in these increments. Very similar to auto-exposure bracketing, but 
changing the power of the flash only and not the settings in the camera. And then ISO bracketing is the same thing. So, in, so instead of changing uh, shutter speed or aperture, it'll only change the ISO. And it'll bracket those. And I'll just do a quick demo of that. And you'll notice again, it does everything in camera because it doesn't have to take another picture and change the aperture or shutter speed. It can do it all in camera. So it's a totally digital process. So we'll turn this off. Now art bracketing is one that I personally enjoy a lot. Uh, so let's turn this on. And what this does is you can select particular art filters that you like. So I like to do cross process two, gentle sepia, and I hate watercolor. Vintage three I like a lot. Uh, I don't care for bleach, but I do like instant film and monochrome. So I'll hit the menu button to back out and then I'll click OK. So now I have art bracketing on and I'll click OK to be on. And now when I take a picture, it'll bracket all of the art filters that I selected, as you can see, and write those to the memory card. Also, it saved one in natural. So it'll take one picture with the default setting that you have in your super control panel, and then I'll add on all of the uh, bracketing, art bracketing filters. Because if I, if I, for example, selected monochrome twice, so I start with monochrome, but I also have monochrome in my art bracketing. It's not going to create two monochrome pictures. It's only going to create one. All right, let's look at the last one here, focus bracketing, and turn this on. And you'll see a right arrow so we can go over. And then you'll see all of these settings for focus stacking, setting the number of uh, shots, the focus differential, and the charge time. Now focus stacking, if we do that first, we turn this on, you'll notice it's either on or off. And what it does is it's going to take, I forget how many, I think it's eight pictures. Starting at the focus point that you set and then going back from there into the distance in a certain number of increments. And this particular feature only works really with the pro lenses. There might be a couple other lenses that it works with, but I found of all the lenses I have, it only works with my 12 to 40 Pro, but it does work with all the other pro lenses, I believe. Uh, Olympus has a list of those somewhere. If I find it, I'll put a link to it in the description. But it doesn't work with like the kit lenses, the 14 to 150 or the 14 to 42. It doesn't work with my 25 millimeter prime. It doesn't work with any of those lenses. Uh, but it does work with the pro lens. But it's really a nice feature because it, it takes those eight pictures, then stacks them together back for you in camera and gives you a single image that's in focus from front to back. So let me turn this off and we'll take one picture without it. Let me uh, go back to a color picture. And I'm going to pick a focus point, let's say, down here near the front, and we'll take a picture. And if you look closely, you can see that, yeah, the car in the front is in focus, but the clown and the pen F back here are all blurry. But with focus stacking, let's go in there, turn that on, and I do have my 12 to 40 Pro lens on. And I'll just leave the focus differential to default, and I'll talk about charge time in the next uh, in, in a minute here. So we'll leave that alone. And I'll set the focus point here near the front, like so, and then I'll take a picture. And I didn't need to use a custom timer or anything for that. It automatically stepped the focusing from front to back. Now it's building the image. And if we look at the image it just took, you can see that the car is in focus, and then the clown's face is also in focus. So it does a pretty good job. Pen F is in focus. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. Now, let's go back in. 
Go all the way back to focus bracketing. And let's turn focus stacking off. Regular focus uh, bracketing, basically it's instead of uh, stacking all the pictures together for you, you can actually set a much higher number of pictures or shots to take uh, above and beyond those eight. As you can see here, you can do up to 999. And I think that's useful for really large landscapes and things like that. Again, it's not something I use much, but I'm just going to show you how it basically works. Let's just set this to take nine pictures. And we'll set the focus differential to five. But if I click over to the right, I'll show you. You have between one and ten to choose from. Five is a pretty good number for short distances. Um, you'll have to experiment with you because it, it, it varies depending on the focal length of the lens. And so wide angle lenses, you, you probably need to use larger steps and, and long telephoto lenses, you would need to use uh, shorter steps. Uh, and then this last thing here is charge time. And this is similar to the high res shot mode where it's going to take these nine pictures that I've set, but it's going to wait, say, up to 30 seconds between each shot so that flash has time to recycle. But we'll leave this off for now because I'm not using a flash. And let me make sure I set that correctly. I can always go back in and double check. Focus bracketing on, on. Okay, that looks good. Click OK, click OK, click OK. Tap the shutter button and I have the bracketing icon. And then I'll set my focus point here in the front. And again, it automatically takes those nine pictures or 99 or 999, whatever I, I set in the menu. And then if we look, you'll notice that as I go back, different points of the images are, are in focus. It's hard to tell on, on YouTube, but uh, let me back up. Like right here, the car is in focus, and then as I advance in the pictures, it gets blurrier, see? So that's what that does. And then you need to use software, either Photoshop or, you know, I have another uh, Picolay that I talked about. So I have a very in-depth detail uh, video on focus bracketing that you can watch if you really want to learn more about how that works. Now, uh, let's go into shooting menu number two again. And the next option here is HDR. And this is very similar to the bracketing or exposure bracketing mode, but it has several choices here. The first one, HDR1, is going to give you sort of the most natural picture. So it's going to take four images and blend those together to kind of give you a more natural image with higher dynamic range. So it's blending the images for you in this case, rather than you having to do it in post-processing by auto exposure bracketing yourself. And then we have another selection, number two, which will give you a little more contrast and, and a little more surreal look to the image. Uh, this was kind of popular a few years ago. Not so much now, but the images still look pretty nice. And then the next one is, it's going to take three frames and separate them by two EV. So this is a little bit bigger spread than we, that was available to us in the normal auto exposure bracketing function. And then we have five frames, two EV, so that's 10 stops of uh, dynamic range that we'll be taking in terms of bracketing, right, for HDR. And then we have up to seven, seven frames of two EV, so we can go 14 stops of dynamic range, you know, in the uh, HDR mode. Now, it's not going to blend these images together, it's just going to take seven pictures, uh, two, two stops apart. So let's try an HDR1 shot. So we're going to click OK. And now we have HDR1 on. And you'll notice that the bracketing turned off by itself. And we'll click OK. Oh, we didn't have to do that again. But at least now we have the HDR icon. So just be conscious of the uh, icons that show up here. And then I want you to also notice that when I click the super control panel, the camera is automatic, automatically selected high speed shutter mode. So let's go ahead and push the shutter button and hold it down. So it takes four pictures, and then it's going to blend those four pictures at 
different exposures into one image. And if I look at that image, uh, yeah, it came out okay. It seemed to save the highlights and bring a little bit of the shadows in. Not too contrasty, but it's something you could probably work with in post. Uh, just a little bit, you know, with JPEGs. So let's look into the Super Control Panel. And you'll notice that I have it set to just large fine by default. So even though the camera took four pictures uh, at different exposures, it's going to save it into that single large fine JPEG. Uh, however, we have an option to save a RAW file in addition to that. So what we can do is just rotate this, and we can do large fine plus RAW. So it's going to save one JPEG image, which is a you know, blending of the other four that it took, but it's also going to save one of the RAW files. Uh, usually what I've been seeing, it's been saving the RAW file that has the negative half a stop of EV. Uh, so I wish it would just save the normal exposure, but it looks like that's what it does. It saves the exposure with a negative half EV or negative half a stop, I guess to sort of preserve the highlights if you're going to work with a RAW file. It's kind of an arbitrary decision by Olympus. All right, now let's go back into the menu and let's look at multiple exposures. Now multiple exposure, you know, it's more commonly known I think as double exposures where you take two pictures but they're going to overlap each other. Um, and there's a couple options to work with double exposures or multiple exposures. So let's go ahead and click OK here and click over to the right and you'll see that we can select two frames like so. I don't know why they don't just say on or off if it's only going to do two frames <laughs> and not give you any of their options, but uh, that's the way they have the, the menu. Uh, we also have more options here, auto gain, on or off, and then we have overlay. Now auto gain, what this does, if we turn this on, what it's going to do is, when, well let me start over, if you, if you have auto gain off, it's going to take the two pictures and, and blend those together, but it's going to add the light together as well. So you're going to get a brighter image than if you had taken just one picture. Uh, if you turn auto gain on, what it's going to do is blend those images together, but adjust the exposure so that you get sort of a normal brightness, you know, a more correctly exposed image, in other words. So we'll do one with it off and one with it on. And then overlay on here, I'm sorry, overlay is set to off. If we turn this on, what this allows us to do is overlay an existing image that we have in the camera. So like I said, it's going to take two frames. Uh, when you turn overlay on, in this case, the first frame is going to be one that you select from in the camera, already on your memory card, and then the second frame will actually be something you take a picture of by pushing the shutter button. But let's turn that off just for now. And let's go ahead and take a picture here. And again, notice that we have the overlay icon on now. So that's one picture. Now I want to take my second picture. And you'll notice, hopefully you can see that there, there's a very faint outline of the first picture that we took that's going to overlay on top of the second picture. So let's just go here into the, the dark area. And if we take a look at that picture, you'll notice that we have two images kind of blended over on top of each other. And there's a lot of creative ways to use this feature that, you know, I'm not going to go into because I'm not really good at this, uh, sort of creatively speaking. But that's how it works. And then let me show you what multiple exposure, and then actually it does turn multiple exposure off after you do it. So you have to always go back in and turn it back on. Uh, so let's do two frames. We'll turn auto gain on this time. And back out with the shutter button. Make sure we have the overlay exposure icon. And we'll take one here like we did before. And then we'll take one over here like we did before. And then let's compare these two images. So this is the one we just took with overlay or uh, auto gain on. And there's the one we took with auto gain off. So you can see that the camera 
try to adjust the exposure so you get a normal brightness versus the previous one sort of added the light together from the two images. And let's go into the menu and I'll show you one more thing we can do. Let's turn it back on. We'll leave auto gain on. Let's turn overlay on. So if we wanted to merge an existing image with a new picture we take, let's try all, all these are the same. Let's just do this one. I can select that one, click OK, and then tap the shutter button. We have our overlay icon on. If you look, you'll see sort of a little outline of the image that we're going to overlay that was already in our camera. So I can just pick something else. Let's just pick this corner like this and take a picture. Uh, we'll go over here. Looks like the touch screen is off. Let's do that. There. So let's take a look at that image. And as you can see, now it overlaid an image that was already in our camera on top of the picture we just took. All right, uh, now the nice thing is if you have it set to RAW or RAW plus JPEG, the RAW image will be the overlaid image. Unlike the HDR image that we took, when we do HDR, it saves a single RAW file, but it's not an HDR RAW file, it's just a regular RAW file from one of the frames. When we do multiple exposure, it'll actually save the multiple exposure as a RAW file, so you can work with that in post-processing if you like, and give you a little more latitude. All right, uh, let's see. Keystone compensation, basically what this is is for you know, it's mostly used in architectural photography, like with buildings and things. So when you point the camera up or down, you're going to get some kind of skewing where the buildings are kind of, you know, uh, pointing at an angle up. But we can, we can use it on this scene that I have here. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And you can see there's no arrows here for options, so we'll just click OK. And back out with the shutter button. And now you'll see the keystone compensation icon. And over here on the right, you'll see up and down. And then over here on the left, you'll see left and right. Uh, and how the camera is going to, you know, it's really tiny, but it's kind of showing you how the camera is going to correct the skewing. And it's, it's easier just to rotate the dials. So you rotate the back dial to adjust the vertical keystoning. And you rotate the front dial to adjust the horizontal keystoning. So I think for this image, I'm going to go down until I see it kind of straighten out. Because if we look at the pen F in this image, it's kind of skewed down a little bit because the camera is pointing down. So I can just adjust the keystoning down to try to correct for that a little bit. I think that works. And we'll take a picture here. And if we look at this, you can see that, you know, the front of the car is a little bit closer to us and the, the Olympus Pen F, the lines are a little bit straighter. And like I said, this is normally for like architectural photography. Uh, now if we go into the Super Control Panel, we're in Large Fine Plus Raw. So whenever you use keystoning, it's always going to save that, that keystone corrected image as a JPEG, but the raw image will not be keystone corrected. It's just going to be whatever the camera captured without applying any of those corrections. Now one other thing I want you to notice is see how the keystoning icon turned green? That means we have made some changes or did some kind of correction. So if I roll this back until it turns white, that means that there is no keystoning correction happening in the image, so nothing's changed. But as soon as I change any of the dials, you'll see that it turns green. So that's how you know you've kind of reset the keystoning error correction back to zero. All right, let's go ahead and turn that off. And let's talk about the anti-shock and silent options. We'll click OK. 
And the anti-shock shutter, the idea being is there's an electronic first curtain shutter, meaning the sensor is just going to be on or exposed without any shutter in front of it before it takes a picture. And you can set the delay of how long to wait before it actually takes that first picture. Uh, usually zero seconds is fine, but you can, you can tell the camera, wait 30 seconds before you actually turn the shutter uh, sensor on. And, you know, I'm sure there's applications for this, but this is not something I ever use, so I always just leave it to zero. All right, then let's look at silent mode. Uh, when we're in silent mode, we can tell the camera the same thing to how long to delay before it actually takes a picture, just like an anti-shock, so nothing new here. In silent mode being your electronic shutter. Uh, and then we have noise reduction mode for silent, because there's still a little hard icon next to noise reduction. If we turn this on, this is not the noise reduction that we kind of typically associate with like our JPEG images, where we try to get rid of the grain or color noise that we see. This noise reduction has to do with uh, taking a dark frame. And it's more common in, in astrophotography, but generally very long exposures. So one minute, two minutes, you know, those kinds of exposures. Uh, and what the camera is going to do is after you take your first image in silent mode, and let's say it's a five second exposure, it's going to take a second exposure, but it has to close the shutter to take a black frame. And then what it's going to do after that five seconds is done is capture that image of the black frame and then look for any noise in that image like any spots or color noise, and subtract that from the first image that you took that when you were in silent mode. And it's very, very effective, particularly if you get exposures that are more than, you know, three, four minutes long. It really makes a big difference. Uh, but the reason it's an option in silent mode, because obviously to take a black frame, it has to close the shutter and it's going to make a little bit of sound. So it's not a truly silent mode. Uh, but this camera, you know, they'll give you that option. Uh, to do that. Typically when I'm doing long exposures, I'm going to be doing, uh, you know, mechanical shutter anyway, but it's nice that they have that option there just, just in case you need it. But I'll just leave this off. It really depends on how you shoot. And then lastly, there's some silent mode settings. And in here we can do not allow sounds not allow the autofocus illuminator, which is on the front of the camera, and then not allow flash. So this allows you to be totally discreet when you're in electronic shutter. So it's not gonna make any like autofocus uh, beep confirmations. It's not gonna illuminate the front LED if you're in low light, and it's not gonna automatically fire the flash if you happen to be in uh, TTL mode or something on the flash. But if you do want one of those things to be on, you don't need to be so discreet. Like typically, you know, if I shot in silent mode, I would want an autofocus confirmation beep like this. So, let me put the camera into silent mode, like so. And now I'm getting the autofocus confirmation beep. But I can go back in and just turn that off, like so. And you'll notice now, when I, you know, acquire focus, I'm not getting that confirmation beep. All right, so let's go to the next line item, high-res shot mode, and see what options we have here. And if you're not familiar with high-res shot mode, basically uh, the camera takes, I think, eight images and then stacks them together to create a single image that's, say, 50 megapixels in JPEG, and, and you can also, I believe, do an 80 megapixel in RAW. Okay, not a feature I use very much, but let me show you what the options are. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this on. And we can set the camera to have a two second delay, four second, up to 30 seconds. Because when you're in high res shot mode, at least on the M5 Mark III, it has to turn image stabilization off because it actually uses the image stabilization uh, mechanism to shift the sensor around to take those eight images to give you that 50 megapixel JPEG. Uh, so, and you also need to be on a tripod so that uh, you have as little vibration as possible. And you want the camera to be on a sturdy tripod. Um, and you want the camera to be 
And when, and when you're in high-res shop mode, you don't have the option to set a delay timer or custom timer. You're in high-res shop mode. So this is where you can tell the camera to wait a few seconds after you hit the shutter button before actually taking the picture to eliminate any kind of camera shake by you touching the camera. Uh, and I, I typically set this to like eight seconds. You can set it up to 30 seconds or eighth of a second, et cetera. Uh, you know, another option for not touching the cameras, I, I believe on the app you can activate high-res shot mode. Uh, or you can certainly add a, uh, there's a remote trigger uh, jack over here that you can use. But rather than add additional devices or go through an app, I just prefer to set it here. I might set it for eight seconds, etc. Just like that, it's very simple. Another option here is charge time, and this has to do with your flash. So you can tell the camera, say, wait eight seconds before you take the next picture. Because like I said, I believe it takes eight pictures. Wait, wait eight seconds between each picture to give the flash time to recharge if you're using a flash combined with the high-res shot mode. And that's more common like in product photography where you're using you know, artificial lighting or flashes to illuminate the, the product. And you can get a high-res shot image of your product and use flash at the same time. But you need, you need a little time for the flash to recycle before it takes the next picture and that's all this does. All right, then finally we have RC mode, and this, this also has to do with flash or controlling flashes. So let's go into this and turn this on. And now we have the little RC icon. But now when I push the OK button, rather than get the normal exposure super control panel, I get the control panel for controlling other flashes. And the only flashes you can control with RC mode are other Olympus RC compatible flashes. And you'll actually need to attach the little FL LM3 flash on top of your M5 Mark III uh, to control the other flashes because it works by firing a little bit of flash pattern from the on-camera flash to the optical pickup uh, on the other Olympus compatible flashes. And inside here, We'll go in here. I can say Group A be on manual, but if I click OK, I can turn Group A off, and if I had a flash attached, these grayed out areas wouldn't be grayed out. I could tell it to go into TTL mode or go into auto mode. Uh, and there, there's a bunch of other settings here. This is, you know, this is not something that I use at all because I don't have any Olympus compatible flashes, but it, and it really deserves its own separate video tutorial. So unfortunately, I won't be able to go into the settings for that here. Uh, but I do have a, a video on the uh, Godox TT350 and using the radio trigger for that flash system. And the methodology is very similar to what we saw here in this control panel. So if you have a Godox flash, and a radio trigger for your Godox flash. You can watch that video, but for, uh, for Olympus, I just don't have anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, and that's everything in shooting menu number two. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below, or you can catch me on my live streams, usually on Thursday and Sunday, and, and we can talk about it there. But as always, I appreciate you guys watching, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.